right, YouTube, today we're out here at the stump and we're doing a video on field knives or bushcraft knives. So, um, to start things off, I think it's important to understand that your bushcraft knife is going to be part of a larger system and that system is utilized for a specific task. So for example, your field knife for when you're going hunting is very different than your field knife for when you're going fishing or um, if you're just going camping or if you're long distance backpacking, that's going to be um, a different knife. So, you know, weight and, and the actual function that the tool is going to perform is going to affect which knife you carry. So that aside, uh, what we'll probably be getting into here is um, general bushcrafting type knives. Um, and uh, also what affects the knife that you're carrying is the other tools in the system that you're carrying. So um, if you're bringing a hatchet and a saw, then having a full-size knife becomes less important because those other tools are going to do what that full-size knife might have been required to do otherwise. But um, again, that all comes back to the system that you're employing to accomplish the tasks that you want to do out in the woods. But we'll just go over um, some general knife talk right now. Um, starting off, we'll identify the knife selection I have here. So this is a Pathfinder Knife Shop Buffalo Skinner. This is my Mora Companion HD, the heavy duty version in carbon steel. And it has an aftermarket uh, Kydex neck carry sheath on it. This is a Mora Cans Bowl. Um, the sheath carry system is actually the multi mount, and it's attached to my backpack right now. But this is a stainless steel model. And then we have um, two Swiss Army knives. This is uh, Old Faithful here. It's my Swiss Army Knife Huntsman. Um, I just got some new scales, yellow scales that came in, so I rehandled it. Um, I did another video on just this specific knife, and this is an, a knife that I just got in. Um, and I'm kind of testing it out now, but this is the uh, Farmer X A locks. So it's very similar to the Huntsman. It's just uh, kind of a tougher build. It's got uh, stronger scales and overall uh, a little bit heavier. Even the blade on it is just a little bit different than this one, a little bit bigger than the Huntsman. So um, I can't talk much about it because I'm still reviewing it, but maybe like next year I'll get back to you on how this thing's doing. Okay. Um, key features. So we're talking about key features of the field knife that I prefer. Now this, everything we're going to talk about here is my opinion. So um, take that for what it's worth. I know some guys uh, prefer different features than me. Um, and that's fine, right? Every, everybody do what you do and enjoy yourself out in the woods. What you're going to hear about are the things that I look for in a knife, and maybe this will be helpful to somebody that's just starting out. So, starting with the um, the blade itself, the spine thickness on the knife. With the spine thickness is how thick this piece of steel is that you're working with. So, I prefer. A spine thickness uh, from about an eighth to three sixteenths for general purpose use. That's what I'm after. Um, like I was saying earlier, it depends on what you're using the knife for. So um, a thinner spine knife, even like the Swiss Army knife here, obviously has a much thinner spine on it than the Pathfinder Knife Shop Buffalo Skinner. Well, the thinner spine is going to work better for finer work. So if you're trying to, for example, if you're trying to carve a feather stick, um, this Swiss Army knife is going to do a much better job. Well, I wouldn't say better, but it's going to be easier to create a feather stick 
a quality feather stick with than this Pathfinder Knife Shop blade because of the spine thickness. Now let's see, maybe we could demonstrate that real quick here. So, when you have a really thick spine, well not really thick, but a thicker spine like that, um, your, your knife is a little bit trickier to work with. It's still doable, right? There we go. I got it started. But it's going to want to carve out, you know, thicker feathers than if you have a real thin blade. Now, you could still carve a feather stick with a thicker knife. It's just trickier to do. And obviously this is a this is a learned skill, so the more you practice, the better you get at it. I'm not really uh, too much of a feather stick guy, but I can get it done. But anyway, you get the idea. And then, um, with the thinner blade, you can see right away how much finer that feather stick is going to be, which is really ideal for um, using it to make a fire. Just night and day. And it's a lot easier for me to actually produce this feather stick with this finer blade. Very simple. And then I can get in and do some really, really fine curls here as I get towards the end. So, there you go, there it is in use. All right, let me cut in real quick here because I uh, in reviewing the video, I realized that I didn't talk about the different grinds on the knives. And that affects your ability to uh, slice with them and cut with them. So, the, the knives I have here are mostly represented by uh, what's called a Scandi grind. So the grind of the blade means that it's, it's the way that they transition from full thickness to the edge. So on a Scandi grind, you can see that like on this knife, three quarters of the knife is full thickness. It's just a, a bar of steel for three quarters of the way down. And then it starts, the grind or the slope actually starts right here and it comes down to a fine point. So um, this knife is the same way. Most of the knife is full thickness. It, you don't start grinding down into the edge until the end. And that's a, just, just a, sh a sharp angle. It maintains that same angle all the way to the edge. So uh, the inverse of that would be, I think it's a saber grind or a full grind knife. So in, a, uh, in that type of a, a uh, grind, you would start off at the spine with full thickness and then it gradually, the entire blade gradually tapers down uh, to the edge. I, you kind of have an example of that here where, well, they actually, they actually tapered the spine down on this one too. Um, so it's thinner and, and this is like a multi grind here so they're trying to address the grind issue and give you more utility in the knife by providing different grinds and that's fine but in my opinion I think that a, um, a full grind knife or saber grind knife uh, is probably a better slicer so if you're trying to slice meat or wood um, it's it's gonna be able to do that better because it has a finer transition a finer edge all the way on the end so it's going to be a better cutter but the weakness of a design like that is they tend to chip out more because there's less steel down here on the edge um, so they'll chip out more if you're batoning or, or, or doing some uh, harder work uh, chopping or whatever you hit a bone or something you're more likely to chip that edge out than on a scandy grind so I think that's why a lot of these companies uh, go with the scandy grind is because it's a stronger design, uh, but you're still 
you know, it's still capable enough of, of doing a decent job with slicing. So it's kind of a, that's their compromise. And um, it's all right, you know, it does fine for that. So that's what you see represented here. So that's something to think about when you're buying your knife. So spine thickness for general purpose use. So in a knife that I want to be able to baton with, to do a little bit of um, hacking, like you just saw where I wanted to hack that, that um, piece of feather stick off the end here. Um, a thicker spine, a heavier knife is going to make that kind of stuff easier. Um, but for finer work, making the actual feather stick or whittling or whatever, a thinner spine is ideal. But for general purpose use where you want to be able to not only carve a feather stick but do other jobs as well, like I say, between uh, an eighth to three sixteenth is ideal for me. Um, in my opinion, um, there's a lot of a lot of like survival slash combat knives that are floating around in the uh, general purpose category. And when you start getting into a quarter inch thick spine, um, for for me personally, it's just too thick. I mean, they do a great job for batoning. Or chopping but let me say this if you're chopping with a knife um, I mean in my mind you got the wrong tool um, you can do it but for the kind of chopping that you're gonna want to do with a knife this right here is just fine um, a, a, a quarter inch thick spine is going to make that knife um, very impractical for most of the jobs that you're gonna be using a knife for um, turns it into a fantastic pry bar or a chopper but most of the jobs most of the cutting and carving jobs that you're gonna use a knife for um, that's just too thick in my opinion so I would avoid quarter inch spine knives um, the length of the blade itself um, I prefer for general purpose use between four and five inches so here you see a four and a five inch knife and both of these um, solid performers uh, for, for, for um, general purpose use. Now when you get below four inches you're starting to get into a knife that's uh, more designed for um, finer work and is going to suffer when you try to do anything bigger. So we're talking about general purpose and uh, that's, that's why I stick with that guideline four to five inches. Um, as far as the blade itself goes, uh, I don't care for jimping on the back side of the blade right here. Now jimping is when, they, when the manufacturer or even the, you know, the owner will take and put a bunch of um, cuts in the back of the blade here. And I, and I believe the purpose of that is to help you control the knife better with your thumb when you're doing finer work. Uh, but practicality how it works out for me is that it hurts my finger <laughs> so I don't care for jimping um, finger choils I prefer a blade that does not have a finger choil I uh, what a finger choil is is you'll see um, knives that have kind of like a cutout right here for your finger to go in that spot so you can choke up on the blade when you want to do finer work. Well, I, I honestly, I don't get it because that is your blade and you now cut a section into that and this first like inch, inch and a half of your blade is like the most, in, in my mind, it's one of the most important parts of your knife blade. This is where all your work is getting done, right up in here. And you just took a huge hunk out of that so that you could put your finger up there. Um, it's now, um, when you're normally using the knife to cut something, you have to jump out here to like an inch and a half out into the blade. So you've lost all that control area for normal cutting. And in order to cut with that control area, you have to put your finger on this metal and bear down on that, which is uncomfortable. So I don't get finger choils. I avoid them. Um, I actually prefer a blade that runs 
right into the handle or as close as into the handle as I can get. You can see that this blade right here has a little bit of dead space, maybe a quarter inch of dead space right here. Um, that's, that's acceptable. Uh, if like you get like a K bars where they got like an inch of just square metal that comes out, I don't care for that either. I want that blade to come back. And because this right here is, that's your fine control area. So when I'm, when I'm wanting to do some fine cutting, that's where I want to be. I want to be up in that, right up next to my hand. I don't want to be out here trying to do fine cutting. Um, what else? Um, serrated knives. Uh, you're not going to see any serrations on any of my knife blades. Uh, and the reason for that is that A, they're, they're harder to sharpen, and B, when you're trying to carve with them, yeah, the serrations do funny things. So, I don't know, if, like, if, if all you're worried about is cutting rope, and you never wanna have to sharpen your knife, maybe you're a serration guy. But uh, for me, I avoid serrations. Um, I don't like a guard on the handle. I mean, this one has a little bit of a guard. So does this one a little bit of a guard, but I'm talking about like those sword type guards that come out, you know, an inch on either side. Um, I know some guys feel that they need that for safety so that their blade, their hand doesn't slip up on the blade. Um, this knife here has no guard at all. I've never had that problem. Um, to me, the guard is uh, a nuisance where it just kind of comes up and it starts pressing into your hand and as you're using the knife over time especially if you're doing a lot of carving or something that's going to create a hot spot in your hand it's going to make blisters it interferes with um, the use of the knife in my opinion and it's undesirable so no guards for me um, and the handle itself um, I prefer a handle that has really a kind of like a bland featureless handle it's just got to be comfortable in my hand, something that um, I don't fatigue with, and I don't care for um, like finger notches or anything else like that. Where when I got to change positions on the knife, choke up, come back a little bit, whatever it is, um, I don't want that that notch or bump or whatever it is messing up my grip. I just want a smooth handle. That's not going to fatigue or dig into my hand in any way. And those those finger bumps, I don't care for those, so I avoid them. Um, that's just my opinion. You know, this whole thing is my opinion. And then um, for the tang, these two are, are well, actually, this one here is a full tang knife. So the tang is this the the metal that continues from the blade. And you can see the metal goes all the way back, all the way through. So this knife right here is is built like a tank. Um, very sturdy and that's nice i like that feature right but right here and here we got two um three quarter tang knives and i'm okay with that um they work just fine this this companion hd is a, is an absolute beast i mean you're not going to break this period i mean unless you're flat out hitting it with a sledgehammer or something you're not going to break this knife um i have abused the hell out of this for years things a champ uh, this one right here this is the cans ball I'm a little bit more dainty with the way I handle this I have batoned it quite a bit it's doing fine but you can see that that tang is three quarter inches and the blade gets a little thin the profile up front gets thin which makes this um, makes it a nice general purpose knife because it feather sticks and it does finer work better than um, Better than a lot of my other uh, full-size knives, but because um, the blade is kind of thinner, but it's a little bit more vulnerable to damage. It is, uh, well, I guess we should talk about weight too, knife weight. So that's where three-quarter tang kind of shines because you got a lighter weight knife um, as opposed to this. This is definitely a heavier knife, especially with the uh, solid wood handle, the brass pins. So um, it depends on what you're using the knife for. So if you're doing a, uh, a little bit more backpacking, you're carrying the knife a lot, uh, you might want to swing over to this side because it's like half as much, weighs about half as much as these. But they'll do everything that this will do. 
These two knives will do everything this will, but way less. So sometimes that's a big deal. And that's where a three quarter tang knife is nice. Uh, what else? Here's a big one, um, the sharpened spine. So this is the spine and the knife here, the back of it. And this, this Companion HD actually came with a rounded spine, but a real important feature for me is to have that thing be squared off. So I just took a file to this and made it square. And I want that edge to be like sharp. You could feel it, you know, it's a nice 90 degree sharp edge. So I could take that, that spine and I could use that to, uh, Let's see here. You can use that to create fine fat wood shavings here. And I mean that's like that's huge, right? So when I want to start a fire, get a nice bundle of these things going. You see how quick that goes with that sharpened spine? I want to avoid using the blade of my knife for that because uh, that just unnecessarily wears it down. But that minimal effort, and just that quick, I got that pile of, I got that pile of fat wood shavings, and that'll go right up. So that's where a nice 90 degree spine comes in handy. Now, these other two knives come from the factory with a 90 degree spine on them. So that's a great feature to look for when you're buying your knife. Whammo feather stick. Um, so now it gets down to the aesthetics of your knife. So, for me personally, um, purely aesthetic wise, I prefer, and that's what drew me to this knife right here from the Pathfinder Knife Shop. This knife has classic lines. This looks like something that one of our Frontier people would have been carrying on them with the leather sheath. Um, the 1095 high carbon steel blade, which I can use to make a spark and ignite a fire if I had to in an emergency. And it's got just the, the overall lines of the knife are really old school. And that's appealing to me, right? So that and the fact that it's got a lot of the characteristics that I'm looking for in a general purpose knife really drew me to this knife. So this that's why this is kind of like my primary go-to bushcrafting knife. And the looks and the overall feel and vibe that you get from a knife, I mean, that's important. You want to be proud of your tools and have a, a, a sense of pride and ownership. And when you go out in the field and you're hanging around with your buddies and you get your knife out, um, the fact that that knife represents, you know, who you are is, I mean, that's all cosmetic stuff, but to me, that's kind of important. So that's why this is probably um, my go-to most of the time. The materials um, are top-notch. It's well-built, tough as nails. Thing will probably last a lifetime. I'll hand it down to my kids or grandkids or whatever. Um, so that's aesthetics. Not to say that stainless steel and um, man-made you know, synthetic materials don't have their place, right? So if I'm going out into the field for a week or more, carrying a knife, right? Weight is important to me. And the ability to um, not have to do as much maintenance to keep that knife in great shape. And I did a video on uh, equipment maintenance. Um, check it out if you wanna see how I maintain my equipment in the field. But to tone down on the amount of maintenance I, I have to do out in the field, that's where a stainless steel synthetic knife really comes into its own. 
and I get it, man. I get it. And um, from a practicality standpoint, standpoint, these are hard to beat. So there's that. Um, and then last but not least, we get into cost. So this is a big deal for a lot of people, especially uh, folks that are new to bushcrafting. This knife right here uh, with the sheath, I want to say it was like 120, 130, maybe even 140 bucks delivered. And that's not cheap, man. So that's quite an investment, $140 um, for a knife, right? One knife. And this knife does not do a damn thing that this knife can't do. So this Mora Companion Heavy Duty was, I think it was $18. I spent a little bit more for the sheath. I probably spent more for the sheath than the knife, but but it'll come with a serviceable sheath from the factory for $18. This knife will do everything this knife will do just as well. There is no difference in performance. And you're not gonna hear that from a lot of other people because of whatever reason, they're, they're emotionally invested in their equipment or maybe they're uh, financially invested in selling something that's more expensive or um, for ego reasons, whatever it is. But I'm here to tell you the truth. This knife will do everything this knife will do. It's all a matter of skill. And it's like, if you get, you can get to the skill point where I could take this $18 more knife out into the field with somebody that's never, never used a knife and I can make this knife look like the best knife that's ever been manufactured. It's kind of like a sports equipment. Like you take a professional sports athlete, a professional tennis player, right? And you give them like a wood tennis racket from the 1970s, like a total piece of crap, goodwill tennis racket. Things worth like five bucks. And they can go out and play a novice with that $5 tennis racket and absolutely squash them. And they can make that $5 tennis racket perform like th that novice is going to want that $5 tennis racket, right? He's going to be like, oh my God, that's the best tennis racket ever. That's not what it is. It's the user. <laughs> he, so now there maybe like you can get to a certain level of performance where, uh, I don't know, this thing might perform 2% better than this one. But you have to be, your skill level has to be so high in order to cash in on that experience. I mean, on, on that um, performance difference that the, most of the people will never get there. You'll never get there. You'll never see a difference between this knife and this knife in actual performance in the field. So um, that's something to think about. And that, that's kind of my parting thought that um, I feel like it's important people understand, especially folks that are just looking to get their first bushcrafting knife, that if you get a quality tool like a Mora knife, this heavy duty is extremely tough. You got it. The, the spine, the spine of this knife is the same thickness as this. The same steel type. There's not a difference between this and this. So you can spend eighteen dollars and get a really awesome, totally functional field knife that'll last you. I mean, if I take care of this, probably the rest of my life. Or, you know, and and you could just stick with that, right? And be happy with it. Um, and, or over time, if you want to invest more in, in the uh, craft because you're finding it's something that you enjoy and you want to upgrade your equipment for pride and ownership, then you can start going up. Um, in my opinion, there's a point of diminishing returns. You know, nothing against you collectors out there. Uh, you know, got, if, listen, if you got a lot of money and um, you're not afraid to spend it on what you like, I totally get that, but I think there's a point where um, you've spent, I don't know, hundreds of dollars for a knife and there's there's really no, no performance difference, um, realistic performance difference from uh, a $100 knife. I'd say probably uh, at the 150 mark, you've maxed out on your performance. You can get into some super steals and guys can talk about that until they're blue in the face. But honestly, 150 bucks, that's it. 
you spend it more than that, you're doing it for cosmetic reasons because you're never going to see a realistic performance difference. Remember, this is all my opinion. <laughs> so I hope this was uh, an informative video for you guys. Uh, if, it, if you liked it and you want to see more content like this, please hit the uh, like button and subscribe. And that's all I got for today. Hope you have a great day.